Well, hello, everybody. We are on session number four in our study in the book of Mark. Uh, this week's lesson covers Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 44. And uh, we see here a narrative about Jesus and what is going on with him. And um, he is including his disciples in his ministry. Uh, that was very common for Jesus. He was um, he was uh, very intentional about um, ministering to certain groups of people. And, and you see here him ministering... Um, to crowds, you see him also ministering uh, to those crowds with his with his disciples, and and what you see is him meeting needs. Ministry at some level is about um, helping people meet needs. Obviously, Jesus's um, plan is to show his deity and to die on the cross and rise from the dead um, for the forgiveness of our sins. Um, but as he ministers, he's meeting both spiritual, physical, and emotional needs, and um, you see that happening. Uh, in this story. Um, so that's the theme. It's about needs. And we can see that Christ is concerned with providing for our needs by seeing how he provided in Mark 6, 30 through 44. Um, he provided for these four needs um, in, the, in this particular lesson. The first need that he provides for, or at least considers as he's dealing with his disciples, is the need for rest. We see that in verses 30 to 32 of Mark chapter 6. It says, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. So you have Jesus here um, ministering with his disciples, and they're just getting so much done. Jesus' productivity and ministry is pretty uh, pretty large, and he's... Uh, got these guys helping him and they were so busy doing the ministry, the work of the ministry that they did not even have a chance to to grab food. I've been in those Sundays. I've had those uh, days during the week where you're so busy doing things that you don't even get a chance to, to grab lunch. You go from one meeting to the next. And obviously Jesus isn't doing meetings in that sense, but um, you're going from one person to the next, um, talking to people, helping people, and uh, so Jesus took some time to rest. You find that a lot happening with Jesus. He does take time. Um, of course, he would have kept the Sabbath. Uh, that there's a rest there. A God, um, God gave us that pattern in the Old Testament, even in the creation. He took six days to make the world, and on the seventh day he rested. There's something valuable to rest. You can't go all the time. And in fact, I think that it's even um, a pretty uh, well established fact that. Um, people who take an adequate amount of rest are actually more productive than people that don't rest properly. Um, of course, this isn't about necessarily productivity, but it is about effectiveness. And Jesus does take his disciples and he takes time uh, with them to rest. And so there's the first need. I think um, we live in a culture that's um, that's either uh, that's out of balance on both in both in, in both ways you can be out of balance when, in that you're lazy and then all you do is just lay around or uh entertain ourselves to death we don't spend a lot of time being productive on the other hand you know there are people that that they just need to be going 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 never sitting never resting never in the quiet always having something going and that's not a good plan either so i think there needs to be balance and i think that balance is exemplified for us uh, by having a day uh, to rest and 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 here by Jesus um, taking some time apart to rest. So that's the first need. The second need we see is the need for response. And you'll see what I mean by that in verse 33. It says, And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all the cities, and out went them and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as a sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Um, Jesus, in his attempt to go rest, still sees the needs of the people. And instead of being frustrated with them, instead of being mad at them, um, he said he sees them and he has compassion on them. And he says, and it says here, it gives a very deliberate reason. Because they were as a sheep, not having a shepherd. Um, it's like they they were they were 
that sheep without a shepherd is like followers without a leader, uh, people that need care, not having someone care for them. Um, I can imagine like just in my mind's eye, just literally a sheep, like just wandering around looking for someone to help them. And that's kind of what the image that you get here. And so his compassion toward them led him to be can continue to minister. And that's what you see in verses 32 to 34. I think that, um, I think that all Jesus likens us to sheep and even, even, um, you know, you as a teacher, part of what you're doing is shepherding your class. Um, you are caring for, you're loving them, you're keeping up with them, you're teaching them. And, uh, and all of us can have like some kind of shepherding role in that way. The word for pastor, uh, comes from the same root as shepherd. Um, there's a pastoral scene talks about a, a, a you know, when you talk about that in art, it's talking about a hillside, a beautiful hillside where, you know, livestock would graze sheep and that kind of a thing. So, um, but even, uh, even, even people who do pastoring work or do shepherding work or, care for people in the ministry, we also need cared for. And there's a sense in which that we are, um, we are sheep. Um, we are in need of leadership and need of influence. And that's Jesus sees these people and he has compassion on them. He has a heart of love towards them. And he, and that moves him to, to meet those needs for leadership, for influence, for teaching. That's what he does. Those, he responds to them. And we see Jesus is very responsive, even in a time where He's ready to rest, but they need the response, and so he does. Here's the third thing. We have rest. We have response. Here's resources. Uh, Jesus sometimes provided resources. If you look at verse 35, it says, And when the day was far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place. Now the time is far past. Send them away, that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. So here's... Jesus, who has not had anything to eat, he's not gotten rest. He um, sees these people that are in need of teaching, in need of leadership, and he teaches them. And it goes so long that um, the disciples begin to notice that physical need and said, "Hey, if you don't let them go now, they're not going to make it in time to go back and get get food." Um, they're thinking about those people's need for they had because they had nothing to eat. These people were were without food. Look at verse 37. It says, he answered and said to them, give them to eat. I think it's kind of funny because, of course, uh, they, they're they like, uh, he's got an agenda. And they say, you know, what? And they say to them, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? 200 penny worth. Um, I've read that a penny worth was a penny was a day's wages in terms of uh, the, the English translation of that Greek word. And so he's saying like 200 days wages wouldn't get us enough food to, to there's so many people. He, verse 38, he said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they say, and when they knew, they say five and two fish. So they're in need of food to feed them. And he's looking for them to be a part of that solution. Um, That's really interesting in it. So you have there, uh, he's get the resource and they don't have enough resources. So Jesus then provides relief um, in verse uh, verses 39 to 44. Rest, response, resources. Of course, he's asking them to find resources as they gave them what they had. Then he goes on and gives relief through providing of those resources. Look at verse 39. And he commanded them to make all sit down in companies on the grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when they had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves. And gave them to his disciples to set before them, and the two uh, fishes divided among he among them all, and they did all eat and were filled. They were all full, and they took up the twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat the, of the loaves were about five thousand men. Uh, this is a very familiar part of the story. Um, Jesus has all of them. Uh, sit into fifties, uh, and that what it said. He organizes them for ministry, hundreds and fifties. He has his disciples. His disciples have provided the food in terms of they found the food and brought it to him, um, and they did uh, they did their part. Now Jesus does his part, and he does this miracle of feeding everybody, five thousand men, and of course that doesn't even include the women and children. And he gives 
he gets everybody full uh, there in the midst of the deserted place. And uh, they it's interesting. He has them organize the people for ministry. He has them sit down in companies, 50s and 100s. And then he doesn't hand out all the food. He does what his part in, in, in supernaturally, multiply, supernaturally multiplying the food. They did their part in distributing the food. And then in the end, there's even some organization. They took up 12 baskets full. How many disciples are there? There's 12. And they ended up with 12 baskets full of fragments and of fishes. So they have leftovers. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. So uh, Jesus pro- provided relief of their hunger. Um, they provided the resources they had. Jesus took their resources and multiplied it and uh, used this as an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Of course, the biggest part of all of this is he's trying to show his deity. And, of course, Mark is trying to show show uh, Jesus uh, Jesus's power. And, of course, this particular lesson does this. Now, we know from other narratives that after Jesus does something like this, they come and they want to make him king. And Jesus says, "I." this is in John, he says, you want me to make you, you want to make me king because you, essentially they wanted welfare. We want, you want more of the food. You want me to, to man, if Jesus is in charge, we'll just get free food all the time. Um, and he says, I'm the bread of life. And so ultimately, um, the physical needs, um, and, and God, God, uh, uh, satisfying those physical needs can only go, go so far in the sense that, uh, we have a need that's more than just for physical bread. Eventually, um, we have a spiritual need, a, a need for salvation. And Jesus is the only one that can satisfy that. A point of application then is that Jesus is doing all of these things, not just to supply the physical needs. He's doing it all in such a way to teach them uh, the spiritual, to teach them the eternal, to equip his his uh, disciples. to. That's what's going on here. He's equipping them for ministry and teaching them how to minister to people. And ultimately, all of this is so that they would eventually see him as God. And as he um, beca- it becomes obvious that he died on the cross for their sins, um, that they would believe and uh, and be saved. And that really is the that really is the need that that the people in your class have. Um, some of them need to be saved. Some of them uh, have been saved and are being saved in terms of they're going to be saved one day when they go to heaven and. And uh, God's the one that does all that, if, uh, you know, for us. And Christ is the one that does that for us. And there are people that are in need uh, spiritually. And we need to get that uh, that to them. And so I think that that's a great application for this lesson. And I hope that this has been a help to you um, as we think about how Jesus provides for our needs. He provides rest. He's responsive. He provides resources. And um, he provides in those resources, he provides relief. I hope you have a great Sunday and I hope this really does help you as you prepare for uh, the lesson that we're going to be teaching. Have a great day.